So, so far we've been thinking about how do we write code one line after the other. We've been doing all of our coding inside what structure? Two structures, really. We always write Java in a... It can be in a package, but they must be in a what? The code in a class, yes. So we've been writing all of our code in a Java class, and then where does the compiler start executing our programs? The main method. The method whose name is main and has a very specific signature. The public, static, and void of main, and it takes in a string array that we can call whatever we want. Okay? Um, this is where we've been working so far. In other words, we can think of classes as composed of methods. What we're going to do this week is we're going to add methods to our classes. The main method is just the front door. It's like having an a house that just has an entryway. It's a very small house. You just walk in, you hit, you hit the back of the house. There's a door to go out. Um, we're going to expand that by creating blocks of code that we call methods. A method definition is extremely simple. It's a named block of code that does something. It's a named block of code that does something. So we're going to uh, program that together. Um, and what I'd like us to do to start is to diagram as we build this class together. So what's the name of our class? Simple method, so class simple method. And I'm going to adjust my writing on the board so it's clear. We know that we have to do that full definition, but to make our life easier, easier I'm just going to label it big. Main method. And inside the class, we are going to, so let's go ahead and cook that up. Let's get our main method in here, in simple method. All right, good. So we've got our main. And let's do a sample print line here. So let's say I'm executing in main. So this is something we've done before. We know that when we run this program, why is that code going to get executed? Because because print tells it to get it out to the screen, and it's inside the main method. Who calls the main method? Pardon? The compiler does. Yes, the Java virtual machine does. We don't have to tell it to run main, because that's what we're doing when we're running the file. When we hit Shift F6, we say, please go into my program and look for a method that's called main. Um, Main method is just that. It's a front door into the program. Any particular task that we want the program to do should be in its own method that has a particular name that allows us to use that code by name and isolate it. So let's imagine that the only thing we want to do in our program is we want to spit out a key phrase. Maybe it's a teleprompter for actors on a set. And so when you run your program, you want to prompt them for a phrase. Uh, one of my favorite movies is uh, called Enemy with Jake Gyllenhaal in it twice. He plays himself meeting himself, which is quite a trip. So we're going to make a new method. So notice that we are underneath main. We are stacking methods. We aren't nesting them. Remember how before we would put like an if statement in here? If uh, 7 equals 9, remember that? These are nested inside of an existing method. Methods just get stacked. So they have to start after some other method closes. So that's why we named these here. So let's make the method. I'm going to make a comment here. So method prints out a uh, prompt phrase to console. OK. And so then we do our method declaration. The first line that we write tells the compiler, what does this method do? How does it behave? So we can write public, because anyone can run this method. We don't know what static means yet. We're going to learn void next week. And then we put the name of the method called print statement. Now notice what we did. After print statement, I had to include an open and closed parenthesis. This is where we will later today give the method data that it uses to do whatever job we want it to do. But in our case, we're writing the simplest possible method. 
We were starting at the basic level and saying, if I call up print statement, the minute I call print statement, the compiler will jump to wherever that call occurred. It will jump execution down to the first line of the method. It will execute all the lines of code in that method, and then it will jump right back to where it was called. And I'll show you a diagram of that as soon as we get it running. So inside of our statement, or inside of our method, let's have it just print out a statement. So use your favorite movie line uh, that you can think of right now, or song lyric. Um, in the film The Enemy, this random guy at work gave him a recommendation for a movie called Where There's a Will, There's a Way. And he watches this movie, and some random bellhop character is holding the bags for the main character. He doesn't think anything of it, and then he has this dream in the middle of the night, and he goes back to the movie and sees himself in that movie. But he's not an actor, so he ends up hunting down and finding himself. So it spits that out. Now, I'm gonna, let's run this file. What output do we expect? Are we going to see where there's a will, there's a way? It should say, I'm executing in main. That's all we got. So in other words, we can write the code for the method, but it's not executed unless you give the instruction to the compiler to do so. That's called a call, just like in communication with telephones. The way that we call a method in the same class is extremely simple. In fact, it's so simple that when I say call the method, students usually look at me with a blank face. You just write the name of the method, and then you give it if it requires information, then you put it in the parentheses. If it doesn't require any information, it doesn't need anything in the parentheses. It's a normal statement, so we end it with a semicolon. Notice, does this print system need anything to do its printing? No. It's just a hard-coded value. And so, now I'm going to label my closing curly braces, uh, end or close method print statement. And I'm going to save it and run it. Oh, look. The execution jumped. Yeah. You can make as many methods as you want. Just put it back in the main method so it knows to, oh, go there. Exactly. So for example, um, we can call this as many times as we want. So I can keep calling print statement. And each time I call it, execution jumps down. It runs everything in the method, and it hops back up. And this is cool. Let me show you uh, if we are on our website. We are using, uh, we are under module one, version one under construction because it's being constructed right now as we speak. This is the construction of the module. Um, I gave you a nice diagram of this. So let's take a peek together at this cool diagram. This nice program that was making all my diagrams died this morning and I couldn't make my new diagrams. But look at this. This is exactly what's going on. Okay, so here's the program we just wrote. Let's dissect it a little bit. So you can see how execution, when it reaches that call, will jump down. What we'll do in about 20 minutes is we are going to actually send information to come down to the method in case we wanted to have some information to do work with. So we'd say it enters the method here at the parentheses, and then it immediately executes all the code, and then it jumps right back up to immediately the same spot where it was called. Not the next line, immediately where it was called because next week we'll see that sometimes methods will give us back information and that information will be replaced by the call itself. And this is the fundamental programming structure in Java. This idea that what we write should be named and it should be in a nice little chunk that we can move around and debug it one at a time. And this is the insight of object-oriented programming. When programming first started, your whole program had to be one long line of code or one huge file of code. Occasionally, it would jump back up, but they used like line go-to statements. Like you get to line 12, and if the answer is true, then jump up back to line 6, and it was a big disaster. It was called spaghetti code. And so having methods that are clear, in other words, when I read main, this should make sense. The name should describe what the method does. Main is our only method that has a name that's not very explanatory. It just is the main method. 
But all these other methods, we want it to have a name that sounds like the action it does. It should start with a lowercase letter. Yes? So if you're making an input method, would it be like in input answer or something like that? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, whatever, whatever that method's job is to do. So let's finish our diagram here. And I'll make mine a little prettier. Can't be that much prettier. Um, so this is print statement. Okay. And then it opens with a curly brace and closes with a curly brace. Now let's see what we can continue to build with this. Um, you see I gave you a nice diagram. I broke down what each of these modifiers means. We would say that this first line is the declaration of the method. This is where we tell the compiler, OK, here we go. Everything inside these braces should be controlled by these modifiers. And so I'll be giving you this a number of times because this is worth studying, that basic structure. Okay. Now, um, you get to do stuff yourself. So let's jump down to exercise one, which is what I'm going to ask you to work on now. And can someone read the design specification? So that was just describing what each of these public static void mains would be in English. Okay, keep going. Inside that method, use the following code snippet to generate and hit a very large number. And then I give you three lines of code that are kind of fun because they use the big integer class. You can make integers, this usually for encryption. You're dealing with integers that are 200 digits long, and you try to factor them, find the primes of them. Um, so I gave you some sample code at how to do that. Um, and then when you write that code in that method, you'll need to import big integer and random. And then it says to call your new method from main between the two calls to print statement. So we just did that together. See how I called print statement twice? You're going to write a new method right, on, right underneath print statement and you're going to call it from in between here, and then you're going to put the code that I gave you. I actually wrote the, the method for you. This is what's going inside your method. And I want you to see if you can get it called. And I should give you, so this is what it'll look like. You'll be able to generate a really big random number. It's pretty crazy. Um, so see if you can do that. I will come around and help, help each other. Um, and if you get stuck, the sample code is right here. So don't be stuck. Uh, don't feel like you can't look unless, uh, if you've given it a good shot, feel free to go ahead and look.